My name is Sarah Dean, and this is video two in a tutorial series on using IGV. In the previous video, I introduced the purpose of the software, went through installation, and described the type of data we will look at in this tutorial. Before we get into the data, though, I want to describe a few different file types that can be loaded into IGV, so that will be the topic of this video. At minimum, you have to load a BAM file into IGV. This is the file that contains the basic alignment information. It contains the DNA sequences, sequence and base quality scores, alignment quality scores, chromosome and other genomic coordinates, etc. This is a binary and compressed version of a SAM file. BAI files are often loaded with BAM, and it's an index file that gives the software faster access to various types of alignment data. Data from these file types cannot be viewed when zoomed out too far. You have to zoom in on a target region. So let's take a look at what these look like. So there are different ways to load files in IGV. I cover that in the first video tutorial on uh, installing IGV and getting it working. Um, I'm just gonna drag for now just because it's faster. So just drag and drop the files that I want. Um, and then it says here, select a chromosome and view in to see alignments. I'm actually just going to type the name of a gene that I know is represented in our data set in order to zoom in. So now I can zoom in on the exon by centering an exon that I'd like to look at. So now that I'm zoomed in, you can see that this track here has an alignment and there's also a track up here. This has a histogram and the histogram shows depth of coverage for the different genomic positions. So you can see that in this exon, some positions have better coverage than others. That just has to do with which primers were binding better and amplified better. Your secondary analysis software may output other supporting or accessory files that can also be uploaded into IGV. So here are some examples of these supporting files. GTF stands for Gene Transfer Format. This is similar to GFF files or General Feature Format, which are also used in bioinformatic applications. GTF files hold information about gene structure or gene features. So they're a little more focused on genes than GFF files. This file includes start and stop genomic positions for the listed features, information about codon placement or phasing, and what strand the feature is found on. Is it found on the positive strand or the negative strand? The GTF file I'm using has information about the locations of gene-specific primers on genes instead of features that are inherent to the gene. Uploading this file results in bars that indicate primer binding sites, the name of the primers, directionality of the primers, and which strand they bind to. All right, so you can see uh, that I dragged that file to a track down at the bottom of the window here. So here, uh, the, beside each of these tracks, you can see the name of the files that produce them. Um, so reference sequence, of course, and then here's that GTF file. So if I hover over it, it gives the full file name and where to find it on my computer. Here you can see the names of each gene-specific primer. So I'm going to zoom in so that that is easier to see. And I can, I can make this track larger. So some of these gene-specific primers target the plus strand and some target the minus strand. And you can tell by their names which strand they target. Not all their names are listed here because they're crowding each other. But if I left click on one of them, more information about that primer comes up. So this GTF file is just useful for providing a visual of where the primers sit that produce the amplicons that you're looking at. BED stands for Browser Extensible Data. These store genomic locations such as start and stop regions. The BED file that I'm using here shows the target regions for the assay. So when I load it into IGV, it will result in a track that displays bars over the regions of interest that are targeted by the assay and by the primers in the assay. So let me just demonstrate that. So I'm going to drag and drop down here. So now a new track has appeared titled by the file name that produced it. And this is, again, just a file provided by the producer of our secondary analysis software and of our chemistry. So they provided this bed file that shows us what regions they're targeting with the primers that they created. As you can see here, our alignment 
overhangs the regions of interest. So we actually are acquiring data outside of the regions of interest. It's just not guaranteed in these overhangs that there will be enough data to call variants with a high degree of accuracy. So this bed file that I've loaded here just provides a useful visual of what regions of each exon are targeted by the assay. So if I zoom out, you can sort of see how they line up with the gene-specific primer binding sites. Some of these regions of interest are covered by just a couple gene-specific primers, while others are covered by overlapping amplicons from many gene-specific primers. Now, zoomed out, you can see that there's gaps in the alignment in certain regions, but in other regions, there is coverage that spans those gaps. So when you put the entire alignment together, you have coverage for the entire length of this region of interest. VCF stands for Variant Call File. It can be a list of expected variants, such as a targeted mutation file, or a list of mutations that were found in the secondary analysis. This file will result in a track that displays bars over the variant locations. So here's a VCF file for this assay, and it's a list of variants that are targeted by the assay. So if I load it into this track down here, you can see a bunch of bars show up. So this information from the VCF is different than the region of interest information because the regions of interest indicate the regions that are amplified and sequenced. While this is a list of specific mutations that the software is directed to look at more carefully. All right, so I'm going to close IGV and show you another way to load all these files. I've been loading them by dragging and dropping them. If you drag them to the wrong location, it kind of makes these windows look pretty messed up and um, it can make viewing all these tracks difficult. So we can load from file and just select all the files that we want to view. So if I, I wanted to view all of the ones that I have just loaded. This is the bed file, okay. And again, you can sort of drag these windows to be whatever size you want. And again, to go to, to zoom in on the same gene as before. So by loading these files in this way, it's rearranged the tracks from how I dragged and dropped them. Now the targeted mutations list is at the top here. The regions of interest file, the bed file, and the GTF file with the primer binding sites are at the bottom as they were before. And of course, here's the BAM and BAI files here with the histogram indicating depth of coverage. Now I mentioned for the gene specific primers that if I left click, I can get more information about the primers. The same is true for the targeted mutations, the VCF file. I can click on one of those bars and up pops the variant represented by that bar. So each of these bars is representing a different variant. Also, if I right click on the name of the track, I have these options for viewing. So there's a display mode here. I can collapse these so that they're, all those separated bars are collapsed into single bars. So that just, instead of showing you the individual variants that are being targeted by the assay, it's just the regions now that are being targeted by the assay because they're all being collapsed together. Instead of collapse, I could have it shown squished and this just provides more space for the other tracks or I can have it expanded as it was shown before. Now it takes up more space, but it's easier to see. So all of the tracks have different viewing options. And as you can see here, there's also sorting options and we'll get into that in another video. There are other file types that can be uploaded into IGV, but these are all the file types that I'm going to use for the purposes of this tutorial. If you'd like more detailed information about the file types that can be loaded into IGV, I recommend taking a look at this publication. This concludes video two of this IGV tutorial series. In video three, I'll give a tour of the layout and basic functions of IGV and discuss how to customize it to include your alignment viewing preferences.